Today is Wednesday and this is what's up. Tell you what, the process of getting a home is a bunch of wait and hurry up. Wait for a house to hop on the market and then as soon as you find something, you hurry up and get an offer and so I am darting across town to look at a house again. This might be a keeper and this might be something that we'll actually take action on. So, oh, here we go. What's your favorite book that you've been reading lately? Um, a book, a dragon book. Reading. Harry Potter. I haven't read in a long time. Oh, shame on you. Been reading. Tales of a fourth grade nothing. Tales of a fourth grade nothing. All right. I've been reading Rework. Don't ask me by who. It's about starting your own business and such. And I'm also reading The Bright Hour. What are you reading? What are you reading? Maria? I just finished Hillbilly Elegy and now I'm reading Ooh. A Dog's Purpose. <laughs> Welcome to Scott's Book Club. I want to share something I've been reading that I found very insightful and very helpful for you. If you like it, awesome. If you don't read it, I'm not offended. At any point in time, I'm usually reading three to four books. I usually don't finish them. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to do better about not finishing books that I shouldn't spend any more time on. Uh, but this is not one of them. I wanna share a book with you that I have found it very helpful. This is called The Myth of Equality by Ken Witzma. Here's why this book is helpful. I've never grown up in a, uh, an environment or in a culture that had a lot of charged racial issues going on and so for me I'm largely ignorant of what those uh, racial issues are. But what this book has done has been really helpful to uh, just kind of chronicle all of the race issues that have happened in the United States. What's so helpful is through the lens of Christianity and through the lens of the Bible looks at what our response to racial issues should be as Christians. For me, it was super helpful to know uh, about other issues of race that happened well after the Civil War. Um, things like zoning and districts and voter rights and uh, things that, that really haven't been resolved and still continue to not be resolved and why that should matter to us. So this is super helpful for me and uh, helps me understand and have more compassion towards other people who are uh, image bearers of God as well. And what's going on racially within our country right now breaks my heart. I hope it breaks yours too. Here's the thing, no matter where you sit in a political divide, whether you're on the right or the left or wherever you may be, uh, politics is all about having power over someone else, whichever end you sit in that. And, um, and the reality is Jesus in Philippians has said that that he didn't consider even equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the form of a servant. And the model that Jesus gives us is that we don't have power over somebody, but that we have power under someone, that we live the life of being a servant, that we live the life of, of sacrificing for others. We live the life of reconciling others. And in this culture, that is going to be so counter-cultural. I believe that's how Christians can shine a light in this world. Um, not by saying, hey, I want you to adopt my political worldview, but by being the hands and the feet of Christ to love other people. The Myth of Equality by Ken Witzma, great book. I'm not saying I agree with 100% of everything he says, but it does provoke my thinking, and that's worthwhile. Grace Fellowship, this Saturday night, we're finishing up our last week in the book of Colossians. Things coming up in the near future, we got a lot of changes, and so listen up for just a moment. Um, stay with me right now, right here. At the end of August, we're going to have our vision night. We're going to talk about the future of Grace Fellowship Church. We're going to talk about what it means to be a, like a member, a part of this thing, and how you can be involved. So if you've ever gone to Grace Fellowship Church, make sure that you're here for this vision night. It's really, really important. Labor Day weekend, we're having something that's called a plus one event. I want you to bring another person with you to what is going to be like a block party. We're going to have a cookout. Most likely the Clemens pool is going to be open. We'll have rain contingencies and figure all that stuff out later. But this is an opportunity to open the doors of fellowship for people who may not come to a Bible study or church meeting. Uh, this is on Labor Day weekend, Saturday night, the 3rd at 6 p.m. Come to the Clemens house. We're going to have a great time together. These are always amazing times. 
And then on September the 10th, we're switching to Sunday mornings. It's really important. September the 10th, we're switching to Sunday mornings. At 10 a.m., we'll meet together. We'll meet from 10 to probably 11.30. On September the 10th, we're going to start a series on prayer. Join us for that. It's called Teach Us to Prayer. We're going to work through for several weeks the Lord's Prayer and how we can grow as a church body in our understanding and our usage and our dependence on prayer. I love you guys so much. I'm excited for what God's doing at Grace Fellowship. There's nothing in the world I would rather do than be doing this with you guys. Thank you for those who attend Grace Fellowship. Thank you for those who are praying for Grace Fellowship. Thank you to those who are financially supporting us. Uh, we're getting closer to our goal. We still need additional support. So pray that God will help us and provide for us in that crucial area. We love you. We'll see you on Saturday.